Good evening, I'm Abhide Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. Bus heading to Kathmandu from Rukum West meets with an accident at Nishikola Baglung, killing eight people and wounding 25 others. Police team at the incident site. CPN Mao Center Vice Chair Krishna Bahadur Mara arrested in connection with the gold smuggling scandal. District Court Kathmandu gives permission to keep him in police custody for four days. Private parties, religious organizations, among others, occupying 2,000 Ropanese of Trivun University's land, nexus of office bearers and employees seen to distribute land. And Nepal police, Gandaki, Trivun Army, and APF register wins in the men's side of the NBA Volleyball Championship, Everest Club, and New Diamond Club victorious towards the women's side. Eight people were killed and 25 others injured in a bus accident at Bagalung section of the Mid-Hill Highway this evening. Deputy Superintendent of Police at the District Police Office Bagalung, Madan Keshi, informed that the bus heading to Kathmandu from Rukum West veered off the road and fell some 150 meters at Bagalung's Zaulepani of Nisikola Rural Municipality 6. Right after receiving information on the bus accident, a team from the area police office Jiwa Kola was deployed to the incident site. DSPKC informed that rescue efforts were being hampered due to darkness. The injured have been taken to Burtibang Hospital for treatment. 20 individuals from the Disaster Management Battalion Baglung and a team from Nepal Army's Ghoda Bade Barrack were also deployed to the accident site, which is 130 kilometers west from Baglung headquarters. The accident took place at around 5.30 this evening. The identities of the deceased have yet to be ascertained. CPN Mao Center Vice Chairperson Krishna Bahadur Mahara, who was arrested in connection with the 9 kilogram gold smuggling scandal, was given permission by the District Court Kathmandu today to keep him in police custody for four days. Mahara was arrested in Bhairava this morning, was brought to Kathmandu and was then presented at the District Court Kathmandu by the Central Investigation Bureau, CIB, of Nepal Police. Mahara had been in regular contact with the Chinese group that smuggled gold through electric cigarettes on 26th of December last year. The Trivun International Airport Customs Office confiscated the electric cigarettes, which was brought into the country by Chinese citizen Lui. The Chinese group had urged customs officials to release the confiscated electric cigarettes through Mahara's son, Rahul. Although there was regular contact observed between the Maharas and Lui and Dao Jiwang, who were alleged of smuggling gold, the CIB only filed a case against Rahul Mahara. Seven months after Rahul was kept in police custody, his father, Krishna Bahadur Mahara, has also been arrested in the same case today. The nine kilograms of gold brought through electric cigarettes, which was confiscated, was later stolen and sold by the employees of the customs office. Nine individuals were arrested for allegedly stealing the gold and six are currently in police custody awaiting judicial inquiry. Meanwhile, the court has directed to take Krishna Bahadur Mahara to a hospital for medical treatment as he has been suffering from heart, mental and throat ailment. The CIB has informed that he has been taken to Norwich Hospital where he had been receiving regular treatment. Nepali Congress has demanded for an impartial probe into corporatist fraud in which Home Minister Ravi Lamichani is also allegedly involved. Speaking at today's session of the House of Representatives, Nepali Congress General Secretary Gagan Thapa demanded for an investigation into corporatist fraud. General Secretary Thapa, raising doubts on an impartial probe being conducted, said that out of the amounts misappropriated by groups along with GB Rai, the largest amount went to Lamichane associated Gorka Media Group's Galaxy Television. Tapa demanded answers from Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal regarding the issue. Likewise, Nepali Congress also raised questions on the appointment of AIG Shyam Gewali as the head of the Central Investigation Bureau CIB of Nepal Police. During the zero hour and special time of the House meeting, issues including wildfire control, Corporatives, fraud, payment for farmers, road accidents were raised to draw the attention of the government. At today's House session, Energy Minister Sakti Badr Basnit also presented the agreement regarding the establishment of the International Solar Alliance. 
Prime Minister Pushpaka Maldahal has claimed Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister Rabi Lamichani is innocent. The Premier made the remark at Kantipur Television's weekly show Fireside. He also said the opposition need not allege the Home Minister of involvement in the cooperative fraud case. This suggests the Premier has given Pr Minister Lamichane a clean chit and comes as the main opposition party Nepali Congress has been raising question on him at the Parliament. Lawmakers have been demanding investigation on Lamichane for his alleged involvement in the cooperative's case and also his resignation on moral ground. Premier Dahal has said Lamichane was given clean chit after an investigation and said the main alleged GB Rai will soon be arrested. Likewise, in the wake of the arrest of CPN Mao's leader and vice chair Krishna Bahadur Mara, Prime Minister Dahal said anyone found guilty of involvement in gold smuggling would be taken action against. In response to a question regarding the reason for changing the ruling alliance, the Premier said Nepali Congress's interpretation of the armed conflict during their Mahasamiti meeting fueled the separation. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs Nanan Kaji Sresta has informed the government putting diplomatic efforts to repatriate Nepalese in the Russian army compensate those who are injured or died during the war and release those who have been held hostage. Minister Swester gave the information as he addressed questions from lawmakers at the House of Representatives today. He also said the ministry had held several rounds of talks with the Russian ambassador for Nepal and foreign affairs minister since assuming office. Minister Swesta also informed the process for providing compensations to those who died during the war or are injured. The minister also called on a national consensus on foreign affairs and diplomatic issues. A huge wildfire has erupted in Pokhara's Kahudara. The wildfire is heading towards human settlement. Efforts are being made to contain the wildfire. Moving on, the land of Thrivan University is being illegally occupied by 18 organizations, including a police station, private schools, petrol pump, and religious organizations. Despite frequent official notices, some of them have yet to vacate the land. The then government had acquired 3,703 Roponis of land in Kirtipur for the Thrivan University some 67 years ago. Landowners were provided 400 rupees per Ropani compensation back then. However, the land allocated for the university has been arbitrarily distributed to petrol pumps and religious organizations with an understanding between TU officials, teachers association, and the staff union. This is despite laws prohibiting the use of land for non-academic purposes. The university officials are meanwhile unaware of the degree of misuse of the land. Furthermore, a building of the university and a land has also been given to a private institution, with the latter denying to vacate the place despite correspondence. Based on a 15-year agreement between the Ministry of Education and Non-Governmental Education Institution Society reached um, some 23 years ago, Laboratory School has been using 113 Robonese of land belonging to the university. The agreement expired some eight years ago. However, the school has yet to vacate the land despite repeated notices from the university. Likewise, the Radha Swami Satsang that has been using 15 Ropanis of the university land in the banks of the Bagmati River has yet to vacate the land. Officials of TU Teachers Association have also been reaping benefits from the university land. The association has been using 27 Ropanis and eight annas of land that has the association's building, guest house, and a shutter. Sixteen Ropanese of land has been given to a nursery for rent. A motorcycle workshop and a petrol pump are also in operation in the university land occupied by the association. The Kanipani Sanstan has been using 18 Ropanese of land and the Kathmandu Upatika Kanipani Management Board has been using 24 Ropanese of land where a 6,000 cubic meter tank has been established. The land was given to the board after the university failed to clear dues of water use. During former Prime Minister Baburam Bhattrai's tenure, 60 Ropanese of the university land in Gangkel, Kirtipur, was given to establish a republic memorial. The TU land is also being used for a police beat, BP planetarium, agriculture 
horticulture center and an eye hospital. All of them have yet to vacate the lands despite notices. The university had also given 80 ropenies of land for a stadium for lease. However, the stadium has been built in larger area than allocated. The university is receiving 900,000 rupees from the stadium, which comes in an irregular basis. The university has also not been able to collect rent of 10 ropenies and 13 annas of land used by public administration campus in Tripurishar since around 16 years. The campus had taken the land for 32 years. The 58th annual report by the Office of the Auditor General had highlighted on the mishandling of the land. Several government reports have suggested for the protection of the university land. However, the government has yet to pay heed. Former TU vice chancellors say a commission should be formed to probe into the misuse of the university land. It's now time for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday, we had asked you, will the number of tourists in Pokhara increase following the city being declared the tourism capital? 25% voted for A, will increase. 27% for B, will not make much difference. And 48% for C, only limited to talks. And here's today's question. What should, be the, what should be done to the Trivon University land that had been distributed randomly? Your options are A, return at the earliest, B, take action against decision makers, and C, impartial investigation. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. In our public voice segment today, we have asked people in several provinces what should be done to complete National Pride projects on time. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Budget, pura pura di sakunu parcha, kam pachi pachi lagya ta garaunu parcha. Gaurab ka yojana aru sabay ma sakunu ko lagi, rashtri niti nai parivartan garaunu parcha. Ani tham apni kam gare ko anubab ka adar ma bala tes lai thikda lai thikka dinu parcha, komisar ma lagnu ho dein. Parthami ka saath kere budget. निकास करने पड़ता है। राज्य पर चले तो इसको अनुगमन कर रहा समय में नहीं बजट दिन और साल के माने सरकार ने सर्वप्रथम बजट निर्धारण करने पर नहीं उनसा पैसा तो सुनिचित तब आए इसी मात्रे निर्माण ठेका निकालर निर्माण वैसे लग काम दिया रा समय में चाहिए संपन्न करना सकें जो खावा को लगे मात्रे योजना गर्नु पर्यो कामहरु सब ठेका समय मा दिनु पर्यो त्यस्तो किसिमको ठेकेदार हुनु पर्यो कि समयमा सम्पन्न गरोस् सरकार दिन दिनको चेन्ज भइरहेको छ पैसा पाइरहेको छैन ठेकेदारलाई काम बन्द भइरहेको छ समयमा पैसा नदिएको हुनाले नि ढिलो भएको राष्ट्रिय गौरवको आयोजना समयमा सम्पन्न हुनलाई नेता सुध्रिनु पर्छ काम गर्न नसके भन्दामा तुरुन्त तत्कालै यस्तै ठेकेदार साहेबहरुलाई कारबाही गरेर काम सिस्टममा राख्नु पर्छ काम गर्नलाई प्रोत्साहन पनि गर्नु पर्छ कुन योजना गौरवको आयोजना हो त्यो सँग सम्बन्धित कस्तो खालको खालको ह्युमन रिसोर्सको आवश्यकता पर्ने हो त्यो अनुसारको ह्युमन रिसोर्सको व्यवस्था गर्यो र बजेटको व्यवस्था पनि गर्यो भने कुनै पनि आयोजना समयमा सकिने कुरामा शंका हुन्छ इट्स टाइम नाउ फर द इन्टरनेशनल अपडेट Israel's negotiating team, headed by Mossad chief David Barnia, will be landing in Doha today. The cabinet last night approved Israel's red lines, and Israeli officials said in order to allow the delegation to hold the negotiations. Barnia's team has a broad mandate to hammer out a hostage deal in indirect negotiations with Hamas, Israeli officials told Hebrew media, with one source saying both sides will need to show flexibility. Talks will kick off later today with a meeting between Barnia, Qatar Prime Minister Mohammed bin Abdullah Rahman Al Thani, and Egyptian envoys. Talks have been on hold since last week when Israel rejected a Hamas reply to its latest offer for a six week truce that would see 40 hostages released, with later stages possible to extend the break in fighting and allow more hostages to be freed. Hamas is reportedly seeking a deal for the release of hundreds of high-level Palestinian prisoners and an Israeli commitment to ending fighting permanently and pull troops out of Gaza, with residents of North Gaza allowed to return home. 
Meanwhile, Israel launched an overnight raid on Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza City, saying it was being used as a Hamas base. Hundreds of displaced Palestinians are sheltering at the hospital, as well as patients. The IDF says it's now in control of the hospital and has told people to evacuate a nearby humanitarian area. Israel launched its campaign in Gaza after Hamas killed about 1,200 people in southern Israel on 7th of October and took 253 others hostage. Gaza's health ministry says more than 31,300 people have been killed in Gaza since then. It's time now for another short break. We'll be right back. Sports News. Nepal Police Club, Gandagi Province, Thiruvan Army Club and Armed Police Force registered wins in the men's side of the NBA Volleyball Championship today. In the match played at the Covered Hall in the capital's Tripurashur today, Nepal Police defeated Bunalikanta Club in straight sets 25-19, 25-15, 25-22 to advance into the quarterfinals, topping Group C. Despite today's loss, Bunalikanta also reached the last eight. In another match played today, Gandaki Province took care of Mukunda Club in four sets, 25-18, 25-14, 27-29, 25-19 to secure their first win in the tournament. In today's third match, Thirvan Army Club defeated Newton Club in straight sets, 25-15, 25-12, 25-20 to register their second consecutive win in the tournament. In today's last match, Armed Police Force defeated Jalakal Volleyball Club in straight sets, 25-18, 25-17, 25-14. The last four matches of the group stage will be played tomorrow. Meanwhile, Everest Club defeated Thruvan Army Club in four sets to register their second consecutive win in the women's side of the NBA Volleyball Championship. In the match played at the Covered Hall in the capital's Tripurashur today, Everest Club made a comeback from losing the first set. Thruvan Army took the first set 26-24, but Everest Club stormed back into the match, winning the next three sets 25-17, 25-17, 25-22 to register their second consecutive win in the tournament and remain undefeated. Everest Club had defeated Karnali Province in their first match. Thirvan Army suffered a loss in their first match of the tournament. Meanwhile, in today's second match, New Diamond Club defeated Armed Police Force three sets to one. New Diamond took the first set 25-17, but APF came back into the match and won the second set 25-17 to level the match at one set all. New Diamond claimed the third set 25-15 and the fourth set 25-23 to register the win over APF. Thruvan Army Club will face Nepal Police Club tomorrow in the women's side of the NBA Volleyball Championship, while New Diamond Club will take on Madish Province. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.